You leave Nigeria, go to Luala, Takuradi, Abidjan, San Pedro, go to the log. So that is our last spot in Africa. We need three days to reach Dublin. They say water means with a fuel. From there, we there for four days on top of water. No way to go again. The water don't push the ship, go meet a uh, rock. Captain called me, say, make a leave. He said, that's no way to go. Nobody to escape him. But the captain tell me, say, but Mr. Salawa, make sure my wife and my children safe. Oh, God. I beg. I run. I want to go to my room to go and carry my money and my release watch. See, officer, he shout for me from my back. He said, why? You don't want to run for your life. From there, I take it, turn back. I know if you go for my room again. Like I say, I go for my room, now inside the ship, I will die. We have two lifeboats. Now, only one will reach the long side for the water. The other one, therefore, rock side. We take them. Uh, we are 27 inside. After that, our 27 leave there. And the ship sink down. We crack. Wow! Today, on top of water, we will push. The food go. But the Navy boat will help us. They can't near we. If they near we, they say we will finish it there. What's of the weather? From that to 3 30 in the morning, we get to the, the Navy boat 7 o'clock in the morning. Before we get to the Navy boat, they don't put nets. So everybody, they hold up, they climb up. I'm the last man in the boat. Carry Captain children. I give the four. When I come get to the ship, get to inside the navy boat, I tell them, say, I want to see the, our ship. Where we come out? Then they give me a phone and when I look, because as you say, the ship don't sink down. You know, there's nothing there outside, outside the ship. So all 21 people who remain are dead. The time Gurara sink, we were be following her. Many of our seamen perished. After all that, what was the reward? 50, 60,000. It is nothing to compare with the suffering, the labor. Ghana was paid reasonable money. Sierra Leone was paid something reasonable. Nigeria, they're not even, ah, <laughs> now wow. We are not remembered. I need their support financially. I am down. I am totally perplexed. I am hopeless as I am. There is nothing with me. There is nothing with me. I won't lie to you. There is nothing with me. There is nothing to keep the children. There's nothing to feed, there's nothing to eat. I've been owing all around. And I just wasn't like this before with me. Nobody to assist him. No one to come to my aid. Life is fast ebbing out of the few remaining sailors of the defunct Nigerian National Shipping Line, NNSL, with many sick and others living in the most unimaginable, deplorable conditions. This first crop of indigenous sailors had served on board 27 marine vessels owned by the federal government until NNSL closed shop in 1995. Their benefits remain unpaid 27 years after. Prior to getting on board, many of them had been trained and worked with foreign liners like John Holt and Elder Dempster. Today, 
those middle class workers who were unceremoniously sent packing live in abject poverty, far below a dollar daily. You see the period where I started this job. After all said and done, they come to give me 60,000, 70,000. Is that money for how many weeks or months? With that money, I lead me with family. So they don't make them forget about that. It's no money. As I would say, sometimes landlord will drive and sweep everybody out of their house. So you cannot be that way. Just like that, I become. Area boy, area boy, come conductor, become a driver, this, that. My daughter is still here. So when that place, the place is, uh, is not all right for me, then the place is linking this and that. If I, when I see, when I face it, I think to my daughter, come and leave me, with her. Memories of their labor and the eventful turns of their lives at and after the NNSL, which recorded three incidents between 1969 and 1989, remains etched in their minds. The sinking of MV River Gurara at the Bay of Biscay, the gruesome death of 21 colleagues that followed, and the nonchalant disposition to the payment of their retirement benefits have scarred them the most. 93 million pound with the people, insurance people, both groups, the cargo we carry and the people with the for inside the ship. They got me, that 10,000 they give me. 10,000. <laughs> that check they give us, they give them the money. They give us the body, everybody holy check. Two o'clock, they come back, they say, the company don't get money. <laughs> they say, there's no money. Now we go back. Carry money, go back, go with military, for Nigeria, go Allah, they can swear for them. That they are, swear for them. I take my hand, knock, God, three times. I say, when I go take one dollar out of 93 million, we shall have to pay. When I take one dollar, go change that, don't give us penny, penny. I say, I swear. I say, yes, I swear for now. And that's where I go catch you now. If you say in England that day, I don't go work. I go there, I that money. I use that money, I go there. The people where they, where they among us, where they, where they say they did for England, they did some money now. They don't come from Nigeria again. What did they, they come to do? Unfortunately, recurring sad tales border around how poor the seamen's working conditions were. An allegation which the refusal to fully and promptly pay them their due benefits lends credence to. Solidarity, solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever for the union makes up. Victory, that is victory for us. In the struggle for our members, that is victory for us. Forward! Rosa! 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 I'm just, I'm looking at the faces. <laughs> no, I'm just recognizing my. Yes. Look at the God protect you for us, give you more life to go ahead, to collect your rights from the government. Thank you very much. 
People of goodwill, like Aziz Supude, if they bring my, if they have sympathy on us, we can get something. You know how many years when we did, so many of our people, member, have died. So many well-to-do seamen. Then I got an agent in here before. All has gone without seeing anything. I don't even want nobody to remember him again. So, as soon as I come to, it's just like a miracle. I wish, by the help of God, I hear Togaria, anything you can, I'm coming to Kenya, I will be happy. Thank you. Thankfully, the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria is relentlessly at the forefront of fighting for the deprived workers and is providing them with support. We are ready to give you the support required. Led by its president general, Comrade Adewale Adeyonju, the union only recently declared a trade dispute against the Federal Ministry of Transportation and seeks the payment of the pension of the seamen in accordance with two court rulings, stipulated labor laws and conventions Nigeria remains signatory to. On behalf of Maritime Workers of Nigeria, I want to first and foremost thank all our fathers and mothers that are here, the retirees of the defunct NSN. If our country have respect for retirees, I don't think by now we continue to sit down here as he's talking about your gratuity or your pension. It is because our past government, our past leaders have no regard for people that are putting their lives for this great country. And your matter is now going to be a global matter that the whole world are going to be involved on the issue of your pensions, your gratuity. And since I came in on board, I've been trying to see how we can uh, resolve this matter. But now, we are out. We will use all what we have to get your rights back to you. It is your legitimate right. It is your right. Nobody take away your right from you. You are part of people that contributed to the success of this great country. If our government are a listing government, by now, the union will not come out and declare trade disputes against a particular ministry that's supposed to have paid this money. But as it is now, we have declared trade disputes against them. So we are waiting for the outcome. The conciliators will be set up to look inward and see how the right that belongs to you be given to you. While it is hoped that this is achieved soon, this bustment of the actual figures should be prioritized to avoid controversy that has trailed the payment of the gratuities and to ensure that no party is shortchanged. Stakeholders are optimistic that the Ministry of Transportation will do the needful to wipe the tears of Nigeria's unsung heroes. LLSA was uh, liquidated. The workers were not paid. These are the ratings and some of the officers of the NNSA, the front NNSA. Because they were not paid, they went to court. Justice uh, Attila Day gave ruling in 1991 that they should be paid. That judgment was not implemented, they went back to NIC when Justice Adejimo ruled that they should be paid pension and gratuity. All the seamen ratings that work with a different national shipping line. The judgment was not implemented, not until Obasanjo took over. Abiy Sekibo, the then Minister of Transport, set up a committee to look into their matter and the committee come out with their report. The committee was headed by Isoke Ari and when the report was released, 
they set up another committee that carry out the verifications of seafarers or the default national shipping line. The issue keep lingering on until when the Honorable Minister of Transport, Umar, not to be a septic but Umar coming, they now give directive that they should be paid. They carry out second verification to know those who are alive who are, who are not alive. That was in year 2007. So they paid them. The total uh, number of seamen were not paid. In the year 2010, the remaining ones were paid. Bringing total to the number of people paid to about 1,013, thereabout. You need to see the living condition of these uh, uh, aged seafarers. Having served this country meritoriously, going all over the world, using their youthful aid to serve. And up to now, the federal government is yet to pay their graduate. Some of them have been rendered homeless. Some, their wives have died. Most of them also have died. Some could no longer sponsor their children to school. Their wives have become uh, widows just because they could not pay little money to treat malaria. It's a pathetic story. And that's why we are appealing to the federal government to look into the plight of these agency ferrets. They should implement the court judgment. Because the court judgment is explicit that they are entitled to both gratuity and pension. Even though the gratuity that they were paid, they were underpaid because as at the time they were serving, they were being paid both in foreign currency and in local currency. And when they were to calculate gratuity, they calculate gratuity based on Naira. You can imagine the exchange rate today if they are to pay them gratuity based on 60-40 payment that they were being given. These are people that take vessel from Nigeria to other country. We are using this medium to appeal to the federal government of Nigeria that while calculating the pension, they should be mindful of the fact that they were earning both foreign currency and local currency. And there's no better time to do it than now. As of now, we have gone very far. Everything that comes into this country through the sea is brought by seafarers. These are people that who have put up their, their life, left home. Some of them will stay at sea nine months, some of them six months, some of them a year plus. They will travel from one point to another point. You see a lot and we pass through a lot in the sea. Right now, now we have gone the path beyond the era where we walk that we don't have any employment. No, now it is not so again. But the union since Madagascar Union of Nigeria, since the other four branches came together and became Madagascar Union of Nigeria, every two, two years, every one, one year, condition of service have been put in place. And they have been reviewing those condition of what service. As I'm talking to you now, we have even gone beyond the issue of only we and companies. Now, the union with the companies and also even with the federal government via NIMASA. We have now come together and for us to be able to form a single CBA for the seafarers in the industry. Both the officers and both the ratings should have a single CBA because it's with the same thing that an officer passed through, the same thing the ratings pass through in the sea. So we have come to an agreement and that is why we have now formed the NGIC. Secondly, there are other laws, international laws, who have already come in, into the system, like the MSC, who have come largely have been able to solve the problem of what seafarers. It is not going to do this when we don't have unemployment later, when we don't have terms and what condition. No, this is no longer so again. 
because the union have been at the forefront in fighting this fight to make sure that Nigerian seafarers should be gainfully employed, should be gainfully paid, and should be treated well while at work. If they can do it in time, I help the helpless, let the let the dead people, let the dead the, the, the dead soul, let them, let them rejoice, let them be happy in their graveyard that uh, at least something has been done through the organization. Let them do something. Let them help the poor. Let them help the pensioner. We are dying in secret. We are dying in silence. We need government. We need assistance. May the labor of our heroes past not be in vain.